Well, hello, hello everyone and welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some of us. I am Yami Martinez and I am the chair of Global Business Alliance Committee at Orange County Realtors in Southern California. And I will be the, your moderator today along with Vice Chair Bob Hartman. On behalf of our global committee, I want to welcome each one of you and thank you for joining us. Today, we are going first class to Iberian, to the Iberian Peninsula, and hope you will enjoy the journey into Spain and Portugal. We are going to expand our knowledge about this magical part of the world with in-country experts who will share cultural insights as well as the economic and social forces impacting these countries. We're gonna learn amazing real estate marketing opportunities and ways to expand our referral business. And we're gonna start that journey in the US with Alejandro Scudero from the National Association of Realtors, NAR Global, who is going to share the wonderful relationship we have uh, with these partners, bilateral partners in the Iberian Peninsula. And as you can see today, we're going to have outstanding in-country experts, speakers as our speakers. Um, we're going to have a five-minute break. And for the five-minute break, uh, we have a video to show you. Um, so we'll, we'll, be, um, we'll be ready for that. Um, our mission. I say that our mission can be summarized by saying that we are Global Business Alliance, we educate, we create awareness, global opportunities to our members, and ways to connect, ways to create connections and relationships around the world. And that is with the help of NAR's resources and, and in a safe and ethical environment. Also well prepared for in cultural experiences locally and abroad. And I feel so fortunate to have the, the opportunity to work with this group of vibrant people. Our Global Business Alliance Committee is a diverse group of 27 individuals who are passionate, committed, and dedicated to our mission. And we have Gita Miri, Duane Beisner, Craig Borner, Jola Cook, Olesia Drozdova, Joyce Endo, Christina Fu, Arana Greenberg, Jeffrey Halen, Bob Hartman, Spencer Hu, Sandy Hu, Lata Jabamputra, Mindy Long, Kana Makino, yours truly, Maureen McGrath, Catherine Miyoshi, Rana Mihudin, Lorette Murphy, Elizabeth Otok, Sylvia Prada, Mary Rampone, Lauren Zielinski, Colleen Trujillo, Tina Vo, and Lisa E. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank or give a big thank you to our Fall Forum task team who work passionately and diligently to bring this great virtual webinar to all of us. And that is Dwayne Beisner, Arana Greenberg, Jeffrey Halen, Bob Hartman, Sandy Hu. Rana Mahudin and our liaison Fong Deep. We are extremely proud of our NAR Global Achievement Awards. Our committee started in 2017 and that first year we received silver and for the last three years we have gold. So we're extremely, extremely proud. Thank you for everyone's support. And now I would like to call on my co-chair Bob Hartman to introduce our first speaker. Good morning, everyone. Orange County Realtors and the Global Business Alliance has been very fortunate to have Alejandro Escudero as a speaker at our forums this year. Alex joins us today to give us some background and a preview of the Iberian Peninsula. Alex was born in Madrid and certainly knows the area well. Before moving to the United States and joining NAR, Alex was the international director of SEMA, one of the largest residential real estate conferences 
and trade shows in Europe. Alex is the Director of Global Strategies at NAR and has been working for NAR for over five years. Alex leads a team that develops the international growth strategy of NAR, increases brand, realtor brand awareness outside the United States and grows revenue via international membership and other NAR products and services. Alex and his team work closely with more than 100 NAR international partners, including associations, federations, and private st stakeholders to expand NAR's international footprint. In addition, Alex is also the creator of NAR in Espanol. Today, he will speak to us about NAR and the work he and his team are accomplishing. Welcome, Alex. Thank you so much, Bob, for the introduction. I would like to start by, by saying uh, thank you, huge thank you to the Orange uh, County Global, Global Alliance Committee for, for hosting this, this fall forum. It is a, a huge uh, privilege and honor to be, to be here. And I really want to congratulate you guys on uh, advancing the, the global mission of your committee. I think it is really through activities and engagements like virtual engagements in this case like this that we can help educate our membership a little better on the global opportunities. And I think this is a phenomenal opportunity to do that. Of course, uh, a huge uh, virtual hack to everyone that's tuning in from uh, many different parts of the US and also the, the world. So buenas tardes for those who are tuning in from Portugal. I know there's a couple out there that are supporting Antonio, supporting as well uh, Luis Felipe. So guys, where, where can I start? Uh, I mean, Certainly, this is a very special presentation for me, uh, not only because uh, I am a Spaniard my, myself and I am a huge fan of our neighbor country of, of Portugal, but uh, because honestly, it's not every day and you're gonna notice that very, very quickly that you get to have the quality of professionals that you have in one panel. And very especially, it's not every day that you get to have two countries which uh, throughout the years have become two of our poster children, I should say, of NAR in Western Europe. And Portugal and Spain are huge, huge case studies for us. And I'm gonna tell you a couple of reasons of why that's, that's the case. Uh, so first and foremost, for those of you who are not that familiar with it, uh, as part of NAR Global, we do have a huge network of bilateral partners. We currently have 110 in 74 different countries. And we sort of uh, split the world uh, to the best of our ability, geographically speaking, into five different regions, one of them being Western Europe. Well, in Western Europe, we have uh, 15 countries where we have different partnerships. And like I was saying, there is something about uh, Southern Europe that's been absolutely phenomenal during the last four or five years. And Spain and Portugal have a lot, a lot to do with, with that. Uh, just to give you a couple numbers, because usually numbers don't, don't lie, and I'll be happy to send this information via chat once uh, my presentation is, is concluded. I was looking at the numbers of international realtor members, which by the way, I don't want you to have this as the main measure of success, but it's certainly a very important one. And Spain uh, is off the charts uh, unreal with close to 700 international realtor members today. Guys, this is really, really big. This is top four within every single country. We take all regions into account. Spain accounts for close to 700, that is big. The reason this is big is because these are people that you are going to potentially do business with, people that you are going to build relationships with. But Portugal, guys, eh, this is huge as well. Because if you take into account the difference in size, we now have Portugal 
just topping a 100 members, international realtor members in Portugal. I, I have to, 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 to blame some of our panelists for this because I know they've been doing a great job expanding the, the footprint of NAR and all the, the beauties and, and advantages really of being an international member. So this is, this is really, really, really big. In only four years, I think it's actually three years that we have had this partnership with Portugal. Uh, they're now uh, within the top 10 countries. How unbelievable is that? I'm, I'm certainly very proud of it. So uh, I'm gonna let our uh, experts on this panel, which again, uh, and as a spoiler, I know you're gonna be mind blown by the quality and the level of their presentations, but I'm gonna talk more from an institutional standpoint, what makes the Spanish International Realty Alliance and the Portuguese International Realty Alliance very special. I was looking at different key performance indicators, different numbers, different things. And I was like, wait, wait, let's keep it even more simple, even easier. So what makes them special? What are the commonalities? And these are things that are going to definitely uh, help you uh, connect with them and therefore potentially do business and build relationships with their members. So both of them are not your typical real estate association. Why is this important? Well, this is important because as much as we do partner with a lot of real estate associations outside of the US with outstanding results, we have started to work on these specific partnerships that are somehow different that help us think outside of the box a little bit and the results, as I have just said, are, are phenomenal. These guys are a, more education focused entities, if you will, that really, really, really invest a big amount of time and resources in elevating the professionalism of their members. And really something they have in common as well within this same field is, and the moment they start talking, you're gonna notice that, uh, the realtor blue runs in their blood. You're gonna know that the realtor pride is not something that they have on their Zoom backgrounds, and it's not just a pin they proudly wear on their jackets. It's a lot more than that. To these guys, to be a realtor means it's a different way to do business. It's a way to understand their profession. And I think, and this is something that in seven years that I have been in the US, it's still mind blowing to me. This is something that most of you guys have in common here in the US, the way you understand your profession. Well, this is something that these two institutions uh, carry with a lot of pride. And the way to summarize this would be the, the, the realtor uh, core values are part of their DNA. This is very, very important because it definitely transpires into everything they do. They are uh, two of the most, this is the second thing that I would highlight. They are two of the most active associations that you're gonna find out there. Uh, especially during the pandemic, I was extremely surprised, not because I didn't know they had the potential to do it, but sometimes it's easy to talk. But these guys not only create and came up with a plan, but they provided a ton of value, just like you guys are doing today uh, with offering content. I remember uh, Francis and his team, as well as Pedro Pereira and, and his team, all of them are here today, offering literally content to their members from day one in February, 2020, whenever the pandemic hit. I still was like, wow, how, how were you able? Well, they were able to pivot and adapt to the new circumstances big time. And you know what? Those numbers that I was giving you guys earlier are a direct consequence of how they worked behind the scenes when things had to go virtual, when things had to be done differently. These guys were there quickly approaching their members again, and just like NAR is, and I know Orange County as well, they're member centric. They're all focused on providing value added to their members. This was very, 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 very important as well. And I'm very glad that both of them share that because that really helps us a lot with uh, 
having success in their in the respective countries. Uh, we talk a lot about NAR and Espanol, and I could not be more proud of that. Well, see how these guys collaborate, and we're always finding synergies as a part of a brotherhood, I would say, between those two countries that Portugal also did a lot of webinars and came up with amazing programming that we sort of jokingly called NAR and Portuguese. But it actually was a huge program that Pedro and his team came up with that provided a ton of value. And just to give you an example of how we were able to work with that content and create value for as many members as possible, they did a lot of programs with Brazil that also shares the same language. They were able to you know, go outside of their, uh, their Portuguese borders and offer value to, to, to Latin American countries. In this case, uh, Brazil, I know they tapped into Cape Verde and several other Portuguese Spanish speaking countries. By the same token, in an Espanol, is counting on CIRA, uh, France's expertise and their members to also be a part of everything we do with uh, the Spanish language, because at the end of the day, I think it's part of our, our responsibility to brag about what's happening in, in Spain as a market and, and everything that we can learn from, from each other. This is what it's, what it's all about. Another, this would be the fourth thing uh, that they have in common. And again, I think this is a good way to sort of understand and appreciate these two partners, which by the way, as a US-based realtors, you all have access to the information through a website that I'm gonna put on the, on the chat box real quick. But they both are extremely active. And I'm gonna uh, reiterate this, extremely active with their ambassador associations. They do not see an ambassador association as a cool thing to say in an informal chat, like, oh, we are, yeah, we have an ambassador association here or there. We have this very nice picture that we hang on the wall. No, 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 these guys go above and beyond. I've seen representatives of Hudson Gateway on the audience. So uh, thank you for, for, for all you do. I've also seen representatives from the Long Island Board of Realtors. This is another thing that I wanted to highlight because it's very important. And you know why? Because they really understand collaboration. They really see that as an opportunity to, to, at the end of the day, again, provide more value to their members. These guys are all, without being your typical real estate association, they have all the best things that real estate associations have, in addition to their huge educational programming, right? Which is what a lot of members are more interested in, of course, as, as they should. Uh, and just to wrap it up, because I really want to put the spotlight on, on, on them. They both uh, have, we were talking about that a couple of minutes before going live. They have a real estate events in their local markets that have absolutely become the professional events of reference in Portugal and in Spain. And this is not because there's no competition. Of course, there's competition, but they have been able to come up with the, I don't like the word perfect because we can always improve, right? But with a very well-balanced way of adding value to their members while not missing the, the, the business portion of it and the fun. You know, you guys realtors, our members, they love to have fun and you guys are no different, right? So they've come up with cool ideas in which they are highlighting business opportunities, uh, again, networking activities, social events in which you can build relationships because this is what it's, it's all about. And again, they do have other competitors there uh, that put together different things, but members and professionals still choose them. And there is a, a reason for that. So anyways, uh, Reliable, uh, trustworthy institutions, tons of realtor members. And I just don't say this casually because it's what I have to say. Realtor members, meaning these folks in Portugal, 
these folks in Spain, they abide by the exact same code of ethics as you guys do in California, in Florida, in Kentucky, or in Alabama. It's the exact same code of ethics that they abide by, and they, they truly believe in what they do. So with that said, I think, unless you have any, any questions, which I will be more than happy to answer, uh, again, huge pleasure to be here with, with you all. Uh, Yami, Bob, thank you so much again for the opportunity. Um, the floor is to these uh, super, super rock stars. Thank you so much. And please uh, tell, tell them about your, your two Emocionate events. I think that's going to provide a lot of value to them as well. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. I don't see, do you guys see any questions on the chat box or the questions and answers? I forgot to give instructions. If people, if anyone um, has a question, please, there's a question and answer. Feel free to uh, send us uh, your question. We'll, we'll address it here today. And if we cannot address it here, we'll be in touch um, with our speakers and get you the answer. Um, okay, so I don't see any questions. So we're gonna start today with Spain. So we're gonna introduce Francis. So Francis, Hi. Francis. Okay. Hello. Ask, yes. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So Francis Fernandez Arista. Francis is the CEO of Spanish International Realty Alliance (CIRA), a national association of realtors bilateral partner that works to expand the international realtor brand and Spanish realtors' values. CIRA has been managing the Certified Residential Specialist, CRS, designation for 15 years and currently has more than 1,200 designees and 700 international realtor members. Before joining CIRA, Francis was the CEO of Compra Casa, one of the most prestigious real estate networks in Spain. In addition, he worked in the finance and real estate business for 25 years developing new business at the UCI Lending Company, a well-known and respected corporation in Spain. Francis loves to travel, enjoy skiing, sailing, and time off with family and friends. Delighted to have you, Francis. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Jami. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you again, and nice to see all these people. Thank you, Alex, for your words. Uh, that encourages us to, to follow our, our way. Thank you. And before we start, we're going to see a video real quick, um, Francis. OK, there we go. It doesn't matter where you come from, once you discover Spain, a part of it remains with you. Spain is part of you. You ever wondered what actors and actresses do? <laughs> this is not a Spaniard guy. Eh? Francis, the floor is all yours. 
Oh, perfect. Thank yeah. you so much to to Yami, Bob, and Fon, and obviously to to Alex for invite us. And thank you to Raisa too, because Raisa is a is a very good colleague in in Spain, specialized in in law and help in help people that wants to establish business and residence in in Spain. And she's going to to explain us uh, how to do it, and how to do uh, easily to open a, a business here and to establish for uh, people, establish people here in, in Spain, okay? I'm going to share a presentation about, uh, I, I know it, why Spain? Let me share my, my screen. Let me share my screen, I'm going to, Share here, compartir, perfect. Okay. Can you see my, my screen? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Why Spain? I I would like to spend the next uh, twenty minutes explaining you why you have to to think or about. Uh, investing in, in Spain or to consider for your customers Spain as a good place to to stay, a good place to live in, and, and a, good, a good place to, to invest, okay? Uh, I would like to share with you some some figures uh, that you can, you can find in internet, in some studies uh, that uh, you can find in, in some uh, uh, in, institution, sorry, institutions that uh, made uh, this kind of studies. And uh, there you can, you can uh, compare how the figures uh, with, uh, uh, between Spain and other countries uh, are evolution, evolution and can uh, help us to make uh, to take decision that where to to where to invest and where is the the best place to to put our money. No? Then uh, Spain is a very attractive uh, place to to invest. Uh, if you can you can see here the feeling of the most uh, important uh, presidents and CEOs of the foreign companies that works in in Spain. And they have the feeling that ninety nine percent of the attraction of our country is uh, is uh, the same is uh, in the ninety nine percent of uh, uh, attraction. If you compare with the other two competitors, main competitors in Europe that are France and UK, uh, then Spain is uh, an attractive place to to establish your your uh, business. Uh, why? I'm, we are so, going I'm to sorry, see... Francis. Um, can I interrupt you for a second? Could you please fix the zoom? We don't see the full screen. It's cut. Ah. So no. ah. It was good in the me... beginning, but then it did something. Let me, and... see. Let me see what is happening with my zoom. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Raisa, Thank you, Raisa. You're, you're muted, Raisa. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Can you see my, my presentation? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, let's go let's go ahead. Uh, okay. One of the most evaluated uh, items in our country for inter international investors are our infrastructures. Uh, as you can see in this, in this uh, chart, they really evaluate, they really has a, a high valuate, uh, valuation about our uh, availability of telecommunication structures, uh, availability and quality of supplier networks, high quality of roads, airports, the general infrastructure. We, have, we are a country uh, with uh, high value infrastructures and they, they, really, they really evaluate uh, with a high score, this, uh, especially in airports, roads, uh, high-speed train, security, 
learning capability, learning capacity of the of the labor of the workers. Uh, in the in the same study, we can see the ch this chart where the uh, the companies think that uh, feel that in 2021 they are going to increase their uh, jobs and uh, the situation in employment is going to recover the, the level uh, in pre-COVID, pre okay? Why set up a business in Spain? They, they evaluate the geographical situation, geographical location uh, near, obviously near to to the in the south of Europe, near to uh, other big countries with high high volume of people living there, like France, uh, Italy, uh, obviously our our neighbors, uh, Portugal, and we are the bridge with uh, uh, the north of Africa. Uh, we we are the bridge of uh, Latam. Uh, our size of the market, the size of the local market, is is uh, quite interesting interesting with uh, near to 50 million people living there and 80 million of tourists every year not uh, the past year obviously because COVID but our regular level is 80 million visitors every year that uh, are a nice market to serve uh, with the local market access to other markets I talked uh, about this uh, labor cost Infrastructures, work workforce skills, Spanish language is a uh, is Spanish language as a cultural similarity. In this case, with Latin Latin countries, tax frame framework, stable tax framework, uh, incentive and subsidies and facilities and adaptation for expatriates. Really, I know a lot of expatriates that are. Uh, live uh, here in, in the city in Barcelona, and they really feel really feel very good, and they live there, uh, uh, and they attract other colleagues of uh, uh, live in other countries. A lot of companies establish their their headquarters in the south of Europe, in Barcelona, in Madrid, in Malaga, Valencia, because it's a nice it's a nice place to live and to work where to work. Spanish uh, high quality of life uh, in this in the same study with uh, the most uh, important CEOs and presidents of uh, foreign companies that work here, they valorate the cost of living as a very competitive cost of living. Security is a is a safe country. Uh, quality of the healthcare system. Is a high quality of the of the healthcare system. I'm going to talk about, especially with uh, to this one in the next uh, slides, integration of expatriates and leisure and culture. We are a, a country with a very rich heritage uh, uh, and culture uh, that we are going to see in the next slides with a high qualification culture in the world. Main investors uh, in the last in, in the last year were the, the first one was was Switzerland, uh, the second one U, U.S. Uh, United Kingdom, France. You can see here many many countries of uh, LATAM like uh, Mexico, uh, Argentina, Ecuador. Okay. Yes, obviously the second uh, leading destination for LATAM investors uh, are Spain. The first one is uh, US. I think that uh, people really valorate uh, highly is the, to invest in a full democracy country, in a full democratic country, because the, the you need uh, to live in a place with a stable political system with uh, that respect the, the general rights and Spain is uh, is in the top of the full democracies in the world uh, as a study that the economist uh, made 
one year, a little more than one year ago. Okay. First class education. We has a we have a one uh, three of the main the most uh, important business schools in the world. The first one to do an MBA in the world is ES Business School. Is my my business school where I I study twenty years ago. Is located in Barcelona, Madrid. They have a country. Uh, uh, they have a, a headquarter in Shanghai too, and another uh, school in Manhattan, in New York. The second one, uh, Spanish, the second Spanish, uh, Spanish one is Esade, uh, is a very known business school too. And the third one in Spain is the Instituto de Empresa, located in Madrid. These three business schools are, lo are located in the in the in the Top 40 of the business school in the world. And we are very proud to, to have this, this business school in this in this uh, chart every year. And our our language, Spanish, is spoken by uh, 580 million people, and 483 million uh, have them as a their native language. Spain is one of the best places as Forbes in foreign in their, in their uh, review, uh, one of the most uh, attractive places to, to retire. To retire. Uh, as you know, in, it's the same in the US uh, with Florida, Arizona, California, obviously, you are in the top, uh, in the top of mind of the uh, People that want to retire to be retired in, in your country, then Spain is the is the same for the north, uh, the countries in Europe uh, of the, in the north, like uh, Sweden, Finland, uh, obviously Dutchland. Okay, why? Because we are a safe country. We have a full democracy, uh, full democracy consolidated with uh, good infrastructures, and one of the Thing that uh, people really valorate is our well, healthcare. We are. I'm sorry because this chart is too small. But in this, these four countries in the top, in the top of the chart, uh, are Spain, Japan, Australia, and Singapore. You can see uh, this chart in the in the in the map, and Spain is here uh, as the one of the most. Uh, Healthcare, uh, the most evaluated health uh, care system by the uh, Bloomberg Health Efficiency, Efficiency Index. Okay, then if you live here, you are going to to have uh, one of the most healthcare system. Okay, another new that I found in the in in Forbes that Valencia is a nice city in the middle of. Uh, Spain, the seaside of the in the Mediterranean seaside is a very nice, very very nice city to to visit. And if one is, uh, they said that is the best city to to live uh, in the in a study. Malaga, Malaga is uh, in the south of uh, Spain, Andalusia, and it's a nice place to live with a huge number of golf courses. Uh, the airport has a, a huge number of flights with uh, all, all of the cities in the UK, in, in Germany, and this, this airport is is a is a very huge, is a very high is a very big airport with uh, nice connection connections with uh, the main cities and other not. Uh, two big cities in, in Europe. And this is the reason why a lot of uh, young people that work in, in technological companies are arriving to Malaga. And there is a huge increase of the, all those kind of uh, tech companies there. OK. Uh, this is a chart that shows us uh, what is the nationality of the origin of the foreign people that live in Spain, more than 3 million. 
uh, mainly are the, the number one are uh, UK citizens with 300,000 people. The second one is the Italian people, Colombian, China, Chinese people, Venezuela and Germany. Uh, a lot of Germans live in there, mainly in the in Balearic Island, and, uh, Alicante and in Canary Island. Belgium, okay. There is not too much US citizens, uh, uh, near to 50,000 50, uh, people living there. It's not uh, the, the most uh, important uh, number of foreign citizens, but it's a, it's a, good, it's a good number of uh, US citizens living there. I, I know some of them. Okay. Mm. As a Forbes, Forbes uh, published in their review a few months ago, uh, they situate uh, Madrid and Barcelona uh, in the top 10 of cities to invest in, in real estate. Another thing that uh, make us a, a nice country to live and nice culture to, to know is because of uh, that really surprised me because I didn't uh, expect this chart, but it's a proud for me to, to see that our culture is the third uh, ranked country with the greatest cultural influence in the world. I thought that the United States has a most, uh, was uh, in this chart uh, with a rank uh, over us but okay it's, uh, spain is the third one uh, why because italy france and spain you know the heritage is is a huge heritage uh, you can see a museum in every corner that you that you visit uh, uh, same portugal i don't know why portugal is not here because it's a it's a very nice country to, to go to Okay, our food is very known too. We have uh, seven restaurants in the world, 50 best restaurants ranking. Uh, if you have, if you, if you have, if you have you ever been to to Spain, you know that our our food, our our cooks are the, the most known in, in the world. Uh, Cool. Okay, let me pass this one. This is the UNESCO UNESCO ranking with the UNESCO World Heritage Cities, uh, situate as as a third the third country with a uh, most uh, uh, with most uh, heritage cities uh, sites. Sorry, sites in the world. Okay. Another another thing that uh, people valorate uh, and is a indicator of our, our level of, life, of living is the, the quality of our sea. Our beaches are uh, in the top of the, of the world in, in, the, in the rankings that you can see every year. There are many rankings. In the, okay, the most, uh, the best 10 beaches in the world you have to visit. And normally there is uh, some of them are uh, situated in our seaside, in Balearic Island, in Canary Island, or in Costa Brava, or in Malaga, okay. Or in the north of Spain, there are this part of Spain, uh, Galicia, Asturias are very nice place to, there are very nice beaches and good good food and nice, place, and nice places to, to visit and to invest, okay. Uh, okay, our, Another of our strengths, and I'm going to finish. With, there are two, two more uh, slides. Mm, our travel industry is very, very competitive. In this, in this report uh, published by the World Economic Forum, see to uh, situate uh, Spain as a with the same rating of uh, Japan, Germany, and France, in the top of the, the top ten of the is to compare the competitive uh, situation of the our travel and tourist industry. We have very 
huge companies and not, not only huge companies, uh, companies that brings a uh, high quality services for people that visit us, not only for tourism, uh, we are a destination, one of the favorite destinations for conventions and uh, travel, uh, work uh, meetings here. Okay, this is another, this chart is, uh, is similar to the, the, the other one. Okay, and finally, uh, some figures, uh, we are near to a million residents here. Uh, 3.4 million residents are foreign citizens. 80 million tourists uh, visit us every year. Uh, international buyers are uh, the 18 percent of our residential residential buyers are foreign people, mainly from the, the first one is as you can see in the, in the three or four charts. Uh, you can see the first one is UK, the second one is Germany, the third one is France, traditionally, but uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, US citizens, mainly uh, origins in, that has their origin in LATAM that are buying now in Madrid and Barcelona. The tourist is is uh, the fifteen percent of our the tot of total our GDP? We belongs to G twenty, uh, twenty most uh, influenced countries in the world, and we are the fourth economy in the in the in Europe. Okay, in the European Union. This is obviously <laughs> you know where we are. Okay, we have a. Huge group, as uh, Alejandro mentioned, we have uh, around 700 uh, international realtors. You can find them in our C in, in, in our uh, website. We have uh, two hand two uh, sorry 100 to uh, sorry 1,200 uh, CRS designees. Then you can find in our website website a huge group of uh, realtors and uh, real estate agents that work with uh, ethics and high education uh, high class education that can serve you and can help you to invest here and to send your customers okay thank you so much uh, I would like to share finally, before to, to have the, the, the presentation of RISA, I would like to share with you four uh, examples that you can, you can find in, this, uh, in our country. Uh, I, I ask four realtors to present uh, four examples of uh, properties in, in, in Spain to invest. You have two examples in Barcelona and two examples in Madrid. Okay. Hello, I'm Joanna Noguera, realtor from Living Luxury Real Estate. I sell properties in the upper area of Barcelona. I will now give you a tour through this unique apartment located in the Tour Park area. It has been exquisitely remodeled by the interior designer Medici J. Ribé of The Room Studio. It has also been published in designator magazines nationwide. The spacious rooms and the home automation are what make this such a special place. There is a charming living room and dining room plus a family room with home cinema. There's also a very sunny terrace. There are three in-suite bedrooms, an ample officer studio, and a large kitchen with staff and breakfast area. 
By its entrance, there is a reading lounge and the courtesy bathroom. It is a unique unit that could very well interest you. Be sure to check it out in Barcelona. Okay, let me show you the second one. This is this is in Madrid. It's a cheapest one. Hello, have you ever dreamed with a property in one of the best areas in Madrid? My name is Maria Matas. I'm a realtor working in the downtown in Madrid. And today we have a really special loft on sale in the area of Malasaña for just 240,000 euros. I, I hope you like it. This is a loft in a house over 100 years old, very typical in this area, with a really big window, and it has two floors, one downstairs with the main bedroom, and one upstairs with another room with a bed and a desk. We go downstairs again, And at the other side of the house, we can find the kitchen with another window and the bathroom that it has another door to the main room. I hope you like it for just 250,000 euros. Call me and I'll show you more properties. Okay, let me show you two more, please. Two minutes. My name is Elena Rodriguez Tato. I'm Rialto and I work in the northeast of Madrid. Here the houses are built with beautiful garden. The average price ranges from 800,000 to 1,500,000 euros. Guadilla is a perfect place for families with children, where you can also find exclusive school for them. In our town, we have a big forest and you can see the oldest home oak with 260 years called La Invencible. The history part of the town has many architectural treasures like the palace of Infante Don Luis, the old convent, the Church of San Cristobal or the Fountain of Ventura Rodriguez. We shouldn't forget of the wide variety of shopping centers and gastronomic places. Guadilla is one of the best places to live, the safest and the highest income per capita in Spain. Go ahead, come and enjoy Guadilla. And the last one, please. This is another from Barcelona. Hello, my name is Antoni Colom from Living Luxury Real Estate in Barcelona. I am a specialist in uh, the new building constructions. I would like to show a grid and house in Aribao Street. This new construction has maintained the original facade from the late 19th century. In this building, we find a wonderful house with a majestic windows open to the terrace with the extraordinary views to the Champla neighborhood. A big living room, an open kitchen, phallic furnishes with the top of the line. The flat has four bedrooms. The master bedroom open to the terrace with his suite bathroom, dressing room and closets. Two single rooms and another bathrooms. And a double bedroom with its own terrace too. The building has a common area with a swimming pool and solarium. Available for visiting. Okay. Excellent. This is yeah. great. It's great to see all these beautiful properties and the prices. <laughs> yeah, you you can find you, you can invest in in Spain. This is 
two, two cities that, that are the most expensive cities in, in Spain that are Madrid and Barcelona, but you can find in, in Madrid, as you can see, uh, flats around 200,000 euros mm -hmm. in, the, in the old town, in the, in the sa safety areas, it's not bad areas, because the, the one that Maria showed us in Malasaña is a very trendy area for young people with a nice atmosphere, with restaurants, bars, similar to Soho in, uh, in mm -hmm. or, or uh, in Chelsea in, in New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, other, the other one that uh, Elena showed us in Madrid is a residential area in Boadilla. It's near, it's 20 minutes from the, the center of Madrid. It's a residential area, typical residential area with uh, huge, uh, the hugest houses and nice uh, community areas. You can find there starting 80, 80, 100,000. Francis, we have a couple of questions. Um, it says in here, which cities, in your opinion, will appeal most to buyers looking for easy going, not too crowded, but still nice? One, so recommend one area in the beach community and one area away from the coastal areas. So okay. If you can, if you want to buy in a no very a very crowded uh, area in the seaside, so that Spain is a peninsula. We have near to four uh, thousand kilometers of seaside, mm -hmm. and it's, it's very difficult to, to to choose because I live in Barcelona and I love Costa Brava, but my colleagues in Cadiz maybe said. Cadiz, Cadiz is better. Then, if you want to, to find a house not too expensive, in the south is uh, like Malaga, mm -hmm. not Marbella, because Marbella is an expensive area, but in Nerja, the Exarchia, in the, in the west, in the east of Malaga, is a good place to invest. It's not expensive place. Good foods, uh, good uh, healthcare, mm. very safe, and with good weather. For me, it's a good area to invest now. Valencia is another one. Valencia, the seaside of Valencia is a, is a good prices too, because Costa Brava or uh, San Sebastian, these areas are expensive. Good, good, good. Um, and also, I, I, I noticed someone is looking for you. There are 700 international realtors that you deal with. So someone yeah. is looking for, um, and they have the, I think if they can write on the chat box, Heidi, um, put there on the chat box and we can take it from there. And then you can contact them directly. They're asking Alejandro, but I think you, you also could be a help on getting uh, an international realtor in Madrid. Yeah, um, perfect. Yes. If they want to, to contact with an international realtor, they can in, in the video, is if they want in the center of the city, they can contact with uh, Maria Matas. That is the is the girl that uh, show us the a small one uh, flat. Maria Matas. Maria Matas. Okay, and then we can put that in the chat so that they can. Update. Yeah, yeah. In Malasaña. And, the and then the other the other question here, sorry, Francis, is that um that there the conversion because we're talking about euros and do you happen to know the conversion right now for- Yeah, yeah, the conversion, okay. If you want to convert, uh, you have to multiply, uh, uh, you have to multiply the price in euros per 1.1. Is a 10% uh, above 10% more. Is uh, 1 million, 1 million, Euros is one point one million dollars. Okay. It depends. It depends on the on the rate that uh, is above ten percent, fifty percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we do have um, contacts also for uh, trade. You know, to to do the exchange. But in any case, uh, I saw that you wrote that, and I'll um, move it to. But let me introduce Risa now because I know people are asking about the golden visa. So let me go to Rice. Hold on here. 
We have another outstanding speaker from Spain coming up. This is beautiful. So Raisa Benermo, Lawyer Lending Strategies. Raisa is the fund, founding partner of Ava, Ava Lending, a company that has assisted clients from 71 different countries to live, invest, and do business in Spain. The clients of Ava Lending have invested over 200 million euros in Spain over the last few years. Raisa is also a member of the Board of Realtors Association of Barcelona, COAPI. She's vice president of the Legislation and Environment Committee of FIAPSI, the world's largest real estate federation. Wonderful to have you, Raisa. You can take it from here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for inviting me and, and thank you for your interest. Um, I'm not originally from Spain. I'm one of the 100 million uh, international <laughs> people who have learned Spanish as their uh, not native language. I learned something new today, Francis. That's always nice to hear. Um, but I've been here living for 20 years and I'm not going away anytime soon. So, uh, so it has been, it has been, a, it has been an, uh, an amazing experience to come to a new country, being, um, being uh, uh, well treated. I, I totally back up the the plans that or the, the 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 sales pitch of Francis. It wasn't sales pitch. It's that's that's how Spain is. Um, as Francis says, uh, we do um, we do uh, help also businesses to land investors. But today uh, in this forum, I'm going to concentrate on how exactly to make the plans a reality because there are certain bureaucratic things and certain things that you have to uh, take into account now when you have decided to, to come and, and send, your, send your clients to Spain. Let me share my screen. We have three figures here on the screen, and those are not there by accident. They represent something. They represent the three uh, types of clients that we serve on a daily basis. Among our hundreds and hundreds of clients, big and small, Around, around Spain, we can divide them into three categories and there are different rules uh, applied to these th three characters. The first one is Tintin. And the main thing about Tintin is that he's European. And when we talk about investment and bureaucracy, the Europeans have a different treatment than the ones coming from the European, outside of the European Union. Uh, then the second family uh, comes from the United States, Springfield. Um, that's also a very typical client, uh, non-European, so a bit more bureaucracy, a bit more hassle in the paperwork, but uh, a family who wants to maybe have a sabbatical year, maybe to invest. So that would be the Simpson family. Also, this family could be called Simpsonsky if they would come from the from the from Russia or Simpson from some some Asian country. Because the rules that I'm going to explain apply to everybody who is not European, and the Simpson profile um, corresponds to 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 any non-European. And then we have this third category, which is, which are the professional investors, professional real estate investors with lots of money. The Uncle Scrooge is here to 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 give a face and name for for that category. So they have uh, probably investments and companies around the world, um, maybe in some tax havens, um, structures, tax planning. So there are different rules and, and different important things for this kind of category. Now, regarding the process, we'll, we'll look very quickly the real estate acquisition process, then uh, have an overview of the documents the timings, the costs, and then a few words about the Golden Visa program. So that means how you can get Spanish work and residency permit through a real estate investment. The process is a simple thing, just six steps. Um, the first thing that we have to do because everybody can buy in Spain. There are no limitations. If the, if the money can be um, 
money can be traced to the to the legitimate origin there are no 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 problem uh, but there are some things that all of our three characters need to take into account the spanish bureaucracy uh, is getting a lot better uh, due, the, the public administration is digitalizing their services uh, with a speed of light but there are still some things that take time. The COVID hasn't been easy. It has, it has, um, it has made some things uh, difficult, but to prepare you or your clients as the buyers, you better start it today if you want to complete the investment in three, four months. So that's, that's the first thing. Now, during all these times that we work on the bureaucracy, the bank accounts, the power of attorneys, the tax identification codes, uh, Francis and, and the international realtors will show you the, the properties. And in most cases, when you, when you have the, when you find the dream property that you fall in love, which is not difficult, uh, you make a reservation agreement, then the due diligence is completed, the money is transferred into the country. Uh, and the point when you do commit to the operation is this uh, stage of the so-called ARRAS, which is the down payment agreement that in Spain, it's curiously paid to the, to the seller directly. The system works well. So when I'm buying properties, I do pay the down payment to the seller. So the system may be different and it definitely is different than in the US or in my, many of the, many of the uh, occidental countries, but it works quite well. It's safe to buy in Spain because the notarial system works well. All the properties are registered and we, for example, don't need the title insurances like you have in the United States, because everything that, that the true ownership can be found out through the registries and it works. If you just do your homework well, it is safe to buy. Then we get to the closing um, when the uh, title is transferred simultaneously uh, to the buyer and the pay payment is done directly from the buyer to the seller. But then the work is not done yet because then we'll take a month to register the property in the new owner's name. We do pay, pay the taxes, the property uh, transfer taxes. And then once the property is uh, registered in your name, if you, show, if you so wish, and if you fulfill the conditions that I will, I will tell you in a second, we can start the golden visa application. So how about the documentation? Here we have differences between the three categories. You need to identify yourself by passport. And then the anti-money laundering uh, documentation is an important part of the bureaucracy because the money will be traced to the, to the very origin of the, of the, of the funds. And for the, for the Tintin guys, for the Europeans, it's, it's, sim it's a simple procedure. Then, uh, for the Simpson family, it depends exactly where from outside of the European Union the Simpson family comes, how the money is earned, if it's from businesses, if it's an inheritance, if it's sales of a property. But we would work that out. We would work that out. And then uh, for, the, for the professional investors, um, uh, it will be complex to to use certain structures offshore accounts. So since long time ago, we have stopped recommending recommending um, uh, recommending transferring money from the from the tax havens. It's not that it would be illegal. It is not. And there are lots of good businesses offshore that are absolutely legal and transparent. But the problem from the Spanish strict anti money laundering point of view is that we cannot prove that because the information does not exist. The registries do not exist. So even if it would be legal coming from a five-star hotel located in, in, in offshore, uh, there's no trace of the legality. So, so it will be complex, but that's a small um, particularity regarding the Uncle Scrooge type of clients. Timings. The bureaucracy, can, we can do it simultaneously so it doesn't take our valuable time uh, away. 
it goes on and it will be ready when when the when the acquisition day comes don't worry about that the mortgage uh, any anyone uh, any client who can show um, sufficient income um, even non-residents in principle can uh, can get a mortgage from Spain uh, that is the thing that takes most of the time it can it can be up to two months easily um, and then uh, then the post closing one month and golden visa one two months so it's a it's a six months project if you if you want to spend your next summer in your own house on the seaside or in Madrid or anywhere else in Spain um, costs that's an interesting thing uh, the main idea here is that it may sound expensive to buy in Spain, but it's cheap to maintain. Uh, the property transfer tax at the moment of acquisition is between six and ten percent in some places for for large or for properties over one million. Uh, there can be one percent increment on that on that uh, moment that that exceeds the 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 one million, but that depends on area. As you know, Spain is not one and only country. We have different areas, different autonomous communities with, with slightly different rules. So if you already have bought in Madrid and now you want to buy in Marbella, please check that the rules are exactly the same. There, there may be some, some differences. And then the other costs are around 2% on top of the um, property transfer tax. Now here, Mr. Mr. Scrooge has got certain certain benefits because if you are a professional real estate investor as happens in many parts of the world the more money you have to invest the more uh, tools you have at your disposal to to make tax planning plan the structure well to to minimize the costs and, and the tax burden so so should you should you identify yourselves or, or your clients with this profile uh, the the recommendation is to talk to a tax structural planner to get it right from the beginning it has to be done before the acquisition because otherwise it's too late all right and then the golden visa program here it is in one and only slide uh, long story short uh it is the, the it is the work and residency permit so it allows the whole family also to work not only to reside uh in spain the it can be obtained in different ways like depositing one million in spanish bank account buying for two million euros um spanish uh bonus or spanish um yeah uh, to invest in in the spanish uh government but the cheapest one and the, the lowest requirement of them all is to invest in Spanish real estate. The fee of 500,000K is the minimum limit, and that cannot have mortgage included on the property that you buy. If, you, if somebody lends you the money, uh, there's no problem with that, but the, the property that you buy cannot be mortgaged uh, except for over the um, minimum limit of 500,000. Euros. So if you buy for a million, you can have a mortgage of half a million since the first first half is, is free. And it can be not only one property, maybe your strategy, if you are an investor, is to buy um, 10 small or five small uh, holiday homes to rent, 100,000 each. And as long as you sum up or when you sum up, when you buy the last property that that puts, pushes you uh, over the limit of 500,000 uh, euros, we can start the application process. Uh, the duration, you can have it as long as you want. Uh, first, you get it for two years, and then you can renew it every five years. For, for, for now, there are no maximum, maximum um, amounts unless the law changes. Um, as long as you maintain the investment and it doesn't have to be the same one you can flip you can choose uh, you can sell you can buy new ones but the moment of of renewal you're supposed to have the 500,000 invested it doesn't and this is an important difference between any other residency permit in Spain it doesn't automatically make you tax resident so you can choose um, 
there are no minimum or maximum maximum stays. However, if you do decide to spend in in, uh, in Spain for more than six months in a year, you do become tax resident in Spain and you have to declare your global global taxes in Spain. There is a double taxation treaty between Spain and 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 uh, and US, so you wouldn't pay you wouldn't be paying twice. Um, if you do, if you once you become resident and you live here for five years, you can get the permanent residency and the passport after ten years, except for the ex colonies, which are all the Latin American countries and Philippines. Um, so here are my my details. The, the the Google is full of full of information, but if you need something else, or if you have questions now, I'm happy to answer and and. Uh, uh, please ask anything about real estate or business or, or whatever comes to your mind. Raisa, there are a couple of questions. Um, uh, you, if you want, you can stop sharing and then we can go into the questions. So uh, apart from the investment, are there any other requirements to obtain the golden visa? Yes, you have to have your um, private health insurance. Mm -hmm. That's one. But here we have got really good news in comparison with the United States because that's going to be cheap. With um, with a middle-aged family like my, myself, uh, one kid mm -hmm. um, under 10, the private health insurance for the whole family can cost maybe 4,000 euros, less than five in any case. So it is it, for, for a year, so mm -hmm. not, not for a month, as it might be in the United States yeah. for a year. <laughs> so, so that's that's a good thing. Then you cannot have criminal records. Mm. And if you if the if the main investor brings along the family, so the family relations should be shown by birth certificates and marriage certificates. But that's all. It's very clear. The, the investment requirement is very clear. Either you invest and you get the permit or not. There are there's no too much evaluation in the process. So it's it's a good good permit. And the other one is if you um, does the Spanish Golden Visa allow allow a person to reside anywhere in Europe or just the Spanish, just in Spain? Well, yeah, all the all the residency permits in the Europe, every one of them in each country, they are only for the local country. Um, but it allows Golden Visa directly allows non-Europeans to travel as, a, as tourists with no additional visa requirements in the rest of the Schengen area, three months within each period of, of six months. Say that and then if you get the, and, and sorry, one, one more thing, that if you get the permanent residency after the five years of living, then that can be, there is a mechanism to convert that more easily to another, to a residency permit in another country. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, and then also, we, you were talking, it says, if I were to invest 500, uh, is it Euro, 500,000 euros, I can still get the residence permit for Spain. The Spain, you only need the 500,000 to get the... Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, the 500,000 plus the costs. The, the transaction cost that we discussed, the uh, 2% for notarial registry, all the miscellaneous thing, mm -hmm. plus the property transfer tax, that cannot be included in the 500,000. So if you have 600,000, you can get any property anywhere, uh, costs included, um, and it's more than enough. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. And uh, can we go back to Francis for a second? Francis, can you tell us about... Um, Tell me. Emocionate, emocionate, a little bit. Yeah, just a minute, Luis Felipe. I'm so sorry, Antonio. Okay, emocionate is the is our annual convention, CIRA. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, you organize and we, we held it uh, for uh, 11 years. Um, this year is in Madrid next week. I, I think it's impossible for you to organize a trade mission now, but if you can, if you want to follow virtual the event, 
uh, you can send me an email and I'm going to invite you to, to see the event virtually. The next year, Emotionate is, uh, we are going to celebrate it in the first uh, week of June. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the second of the third of June, the 20, 2022. And it's a very nice event where you can find uh, the best professionals uh, in real estate uh, of Spain and Port even Portugal, some from from France, uh, sorry, France, France and Italy, and some of them came from US, uh, mainly from our partners, uh, our bilateral, our uh, association. Uh, partners uh, like LIBOR or uh, mm. Florida Realtors, or for sure, uh, I hope, from from California. Then, imagine mm -hmm. this. I, I shared the link to our uh, video uh, in YouTube. If you, you can find it in Emotionate 2019, and there is a, a short video that explains the, the event. Okay, I think um, let's share it when it says share with everyone, because I think you share some of the set panelists. So let's share it with every, everyone. And that yeah. way, yeah, and your uh, information too, that would be great. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to share for everyone. Okay. Yes. And then there's a question for Riza. Uh, it says, What if you are purchasing a home in Spain with a Spanish citizen? Do you do the minimum requirements change? If this Spanish citizen happens to be your spouse, for example, then there is a better way to get the residency permit through the Spanish citizenship. But if it's just the buddy, just a friend, well, then um, the Spanish citizen doesn't need the, the permit and the non Spaniard should invest the 500,000 in order to get the permit. So they can, they can or any buyer, any two buyers buying one or making one investment can share the investment in any pro proportion between themselves. So they can buy 50, 50, 10, 90, but in, in, in case of two investors not related to each other, okay. um, the, the non-Spaniard should, in order to get the golden visa, or then they could get married. That's also possible, maybe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Someone is gonna go live in Spain. I, I wouldn't mind having a property there as well. Okay, um, I'm gonna have one house in Portugal, one in Spain, one in Costa Rica. I'm gonna continue going. So I'll be all over the map. Okay, guys, so now with all that, um, let's go to Bob Hartman. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm getting too excited here because I'm so excited about the next speakers too. Uh, but we're gonna have a five minute break. We're gonna take a five minute break um, before we um, continue with now Portugal. So <laughs> you see, I get too excited. So let's let's go, let's take, let's be back at 12.30, uh, which is Pacific time. So let's just go for five minutes and then we're gonna go right into the introduction of, of Luis Felipe. And then we'll continue moving on uh, to Antonio who just finished a train mission. And I'm going on the next one. Hello. Welcome. Xin chào. Hola. Cześć i witam. Ni hao. Bonjour. Hello. Namaste. Our purpose is to create and advocate for educational programs and partnerships designed to raise member awareness of global clients and investment groups in our local market, and to provide the dissemination of information that facilitates and promotes greater interaction, understanding, and cooperation across cultural lines within and peripheral to the real estate profession. With the help of NAR's resources, we are working towards building cooperative relationships with foreign real estate associations, developing global business connections, and networking with the international real estate community in a safe and ethical environment. Thank you. Maraming salamat. 
سلام گراسیس کم ان اریگاتو گوزای ماستا ویتام واس شکریہ We are the Orange County Global Business Alliance, connecting you to the world. Come and get global with us. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, our first speaker today from Portugal is Luis Felipe Anero. Luis graduated university with a degree in electrical and computer engineering. He worked in that field for eight years as an IT consultant and programmer. He held many positions in that field. However, Luis left that field in 2010 and became a real estate agent. Their loss was our gain. While working for Remax, he was awarded in 2011 second best agent in South Lisbon and Remax Portugal 2011 awarded agent. He left Remax in 2012. Somewhere between 2012 and today, a fire was started under Luis. He joined Century 21, became a broker, CEO and principal. He joined NAR and has earned the designations of CRS, CIPS, and ABR. He has also attained the ISEG certification for luxury brand management and is a member of the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing. Luis is an NAR director for Western Europe and is a committee member for NAR Global Business and Alliances. Welcome, Luis. Thank you very much. What an introduction, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm here uh, in, in the position that, was, that should be for Pedro Pereira, that Pedro is the, our president in the, our Portuguese association. It is called Portuguese International Realty. I'm in his, in his name here. But I will, I will try to do my best. My English is a little rusty. I'm so sorry about that. I hope when I go to San Diego, I will, be, I will improve my English. But now let's, 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 let's move on. First of all, uh, I, I would like to thank you for the invitation and for the honor to be here. Queria agradecer a todos los, los, los españoles por, la, por, la, por la, la, las gracias y el honor de estar aqui y hablar para todos. E um, e um muito obrigado a todos os portugueses que estão nos Estados Unidos e estão em Portugal e que realmente nos estão aqui a ouvir. É uma honra enorme estar aqui a representar Portugal. So, the, the, the presentation is that, is, is done. Let's, let's move for the, for the presentation. Um, first of all, I would like to, to say that Portugal is one of the oldest countries in Europe, one of the oldest frontiers in Europe. Uh, it tells uh, our history that uh, it probably is one of, probably the, the only country that is, a, um, how can I say, uh, a Templar country, uh, the oldest one, with, a, with a, the oldest treaty, treaty with the British that is called the Winter Treaty. So it's a very, a very uh, deep secret that has been hidden in Europe and in the, in the last few years, I think it's revealed to the, to the entire world. And Portugal, Portugal nowadays is a very important hotspot in the industry of tourism, in the real estate, and commerce, and in industry, in all in the other sectors of the of the real estate. So let's move on. Okay. Only you can make all this work. Nur du kannst die Dunkelheit erstrahlen. Solo du puedes emocionarme, traerme ese color. Amplir mon cœur d'amour. 
que pour toi Only you Puedes lograr ese cambio en mí C'est bien vrai Tu es ma destinée Visit our sea, our sun, our heritage and our culture. Only you can continue to make us the best destination in the world. Visit Portugal. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, for opening the, the presentation, I would like to say that uh, nowadays Portugal has been awarded with too many, with many awards. Uh, Tourism, for example, uh, in, the, in the last month, uh, in Villa Moura Marina has, awarded, has been awarded the, the best marine in the world. Uh, one other big uh, accomplishment in Portugal, that 80% uh, of, of the, the Portuguese people have been vaccinated against COVID. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's the, first, the first country with that high, uh, high rate of vaccinated people. It was very, it was uh, really outstanding. One, one more important thing is Portugal nowadays is the third safest country in the world. So what can I say? I think it's the real deal. Portugal is, is too much more, too much more, too much more. So you can, you can, you can go to the, next, to the next page, please. So where is Portugal? Portugal, it's, it's the last frontier of Europe uh, with, the, with the Atlantic Ocean, almost, almost frontier with the United States, just a big ocean between us. Uh, we have uh, in, the, in, the, in the middle uh, the, Azores, the Azores Islands and the Madeira Islands. Uh, there is a history between Portugal and the United States with the Azores Island, with the United States uh, base uh, military base uh, in, in the last years nowadays it's not too i think they don't they, they don't have the base there but in the last years they they, they were a, a, a united states air force base it was very, very important so portugal has been uh, not normally in the in the time in the, in the all, all our history uh, a country we would afford go, going to the sea it was the first it was the first country with the biggest in, in, Made, uh, with, the, with the biggest empire uh, in the sea. For example, the tempura in Japan, it's influenced by the Portuguese food in Japan. Uh, we have been uh, in Canada, in Brazil, in Africa, in India, in Japan. It was a, it was a very big uh, exposition about the Portuguese culture, about, about the Portuguese food, and about the Portuguese wine in everything. Our culture is almost in every, every country. Our GPV, it's not a high GPV nowadays, it's about 20, 29,000 uh, euros, uh, almost uh, half of the United States of America. Uh, for example, coming to Portugal, economic, 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 uh, economical uh, speaking, it's very, it's very good uh, to make business, to start a company, to live, uh, to make tourism, for example, because Portugal don't, don't have a great GPV. Uh, we have 
uh, uh, open mind, the open mind personality. We, we, we were the first, the first country to abolish, to abolish the death penalty. Gay marriage has been uh, officially Portugal about uh, 2010. We are typical open, open mind country. I think it's this. This is. I'm proud to, to be Portuguese and have this open mind country and for for ex, for foreign people to come to Portugal normally we are very open mind we are we have uh, we are known in entire in, in all the world for being very very welcome to, to everybody and, and I think the people of Portugal are the the, the our our best uh, our best the, the best the richest thing that you can offer to the world so for the next for the, for the next for the next picture please sorry i'm a little bit nervous my rest in english it's not not too good that's a black uh, this these two graphics it's about our gpd and about our inflection uh, it's not too high it's not too 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 low it's typical for a, for a country that came from from the the subprime crisis that all all, all you know we are a small country our inflection uh, are controlled. Our PIB uh, now, nowadays we expecting to, in the future to improve a little bit, a little more, a little more, a little best, a little more, a little longer. Uh, have a biggest improvement. Uh, we have nowadays a, a government program to, in, to to put our our economy a little bit a little bit higher with the European Union Union uh, injection of capital. Let's see what what we have in the in the future. Next slide, slide please. About unemployment in Portugal, we can say probably we don't have unemployment. Uh, we have low taxes, uh, low, low, low percentage of unemployment. Uh, we have in Portugal one um, uh, skilled labor. What probably one of the the, the the percentage of highest skilled workers in Europe. For example, we are exporting. We are exporting skilled workers to the entire entire world for England, in Spain, in, in Germany, in the United States, uh, coming to Portugal, living in Portugal and bring economy and bring your business probably is one fantastic option. It's one of the best option. It's because Portugal, in my opinion, it's much more than living. We can you can come, live and work here. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And, and we can improve our economy and don't let us to export people to go outside because normally it's terrible as you, as you know. Next slide, please. Our, our exportations. So we are, we are known uh, about our exportations in, the, in the, our industries. Uh, most important industries in Portugal is about oil, vehicles, uh, shoes and wines. Uh, this is uh, our Portuguese major exports. Uh, it's typical for a small country. But this is our, our typical economy. Uh, I think in, in 2019, uh, we have uh, some, something about uh, imp importing, importing to about airplanes. Uh, we have a, a boost of our economy. For example, our real estate industry, in residential, we have a, a, a tremendous, a tremendous uh, demand. We have low available properties, but for example, in the, in the commercial real estate, we have nowadays available, and it probably should, could could be a, an, op an opportunity to, to make to make uh, the golden visa, for example, about uh, with the, the commercial real estate, the industrial real estate, and go 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 much more than that than that. And make the second the, the second step the, the second step to the real estate uh, residential real estate. Next slide, please. Our 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 association. Well, we are the Portuguese International Realty. We are re representing Portugal, the National Associations of Realtors, from 2018. Uh, this this association is a. Collaboration uh, with UCE, it is it's a mortgage bank to make loans, and APEMIP, it's our one of the one of our two industry associations. 
and they make it and bring the the NAR, the NAR to Portugal. Uh, in Portugal, we have the nowadays three, four uh, certifications: ABR, the the the, the, the bio representative, the CIPS for international, the green nowadays, and probably in the future the the seller, the seller representative. Nowadays, like like Alexander, Alexa F. Salt, we have reached 100 members in Portugal. We are working hard to, to improve more and more and more this number. Uh, and we are spelling the words of the, the ethic code of realtors. And we, you, I can tell you, all the realtors in Portugal, uh, they, 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 they follow the ethic rule, the ethic rule of ANA and R and gives the confidence of all the, the, the business that you make in Portugal. For example, our community CIPS have, has a large percentage uh, of our members in Portugal. It's about 40, 50%, for example. Next slide, please. Well, I can tell you in Portugal, we have all the major, all the major international real estate brands are represented in Portugal nowadays. NAR is represented in Portugal with, with, the, with the, the, the certifications that I told you. And in the real estate transactions, there is no mandatory, mandatory inspection. So the, the, import, the importance of a real, of real professionals makes all the difference in Portugal. I think in Spain, they don't have the inspection too. Uh, it's typical in, in, the, in the peninsula, in, in the Iberica Peninsula. That you, when you make the the, 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 the the transaction, what you see is what you get. So I think I always say this: it's, I think it's very important to make the connection with a true realtor, with a true realtor that that follows an ethic code. Because not having um, the inspection like you have in the United States, uh, I think make, makes all the difference. The the, the, the difference in construction. Uh, it, Makes to make 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 sense make some some kind of sense because in Portugal we don't build in, in Spain we don't build with timber. It's, it's a solid solid construction. It's different, but it's it's always important to, to 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 follow this principle that what you see is what you get. Well, in Portugal there are all all these these these, these brands, all these international brands, all these American brands. We have um, almost forty five thousand agents in Portugal. Uh, and, the, and the, for example, the Remax, the Century 21, and ERA are the biggest ones in Portugal. But uh, I think we have an American culture in making deals with, with the, the real estate agent in Portugal. A USA realtor, don't, I don't think they, 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 they will see any kind of difference because we, we work, I think, the just the same. Next slide, please. Well, the real estate market. I will show you now some simple, simple state, uh, statistics. I don't want to be borrow you. Uh, I'm not a financial guy. I'm a broker. I'm an agent. <laughs> so I'm, I know I, I would not develop very much this, this issue, but I will give you some, some data. Okay. Next slide, please. This is the, the, real, the Portuguese real estate about the building licenses in Portugal and the finishes by, by license in Portugal. Uh, I, 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 like I tell you before, uh, we have nowadays uh, not too much available properties to sell. Uh, we have, to, I think, the, the same problem that you have in the United States. Tremendous demand, tremendous demand, but uh, not, not too much available. I, I can tell in Europe, the, the, the materials for building the, the, the houses and the properties have nowadays uh, a very big, uh, high value. Uh, they, they increase too much and probably in the future uh, should not be too, too much building license or the, the prices could, could in, in, in increase a little more because the, 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 the materials to building, to, 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 to make the buildings and, and everything like that. Next slide, please. In Portugal, nowadays, we have this, this number of transactions. I think this is from the last quarter. Uh, we are a small country, as you can see. 
Uh, we can compare Portugal uh, with Florida, for example. <laughs> we have two, like, two, big cities, two big cities like Porto and Lisbon. Uh, Lisbon is, is our capital, but Porto nowadays probably it's a, a little a, a more hot spot for, for business than Lisbon nowadays. For example, Mario Rubio had a trade mission that Antonio Barbosa made in Portugal. They even went to Algarve, where are our beaches, our famous beaches, uh, with, a, with a tremendous legal connection with the United with the UK. It's, uh, too much people say in Portugal that Algarve, it's the UK, UK land for making holidays. Uh, it's not Portuguese, it's, it's from UK. You can see we have this, this connection with the UK, and it's normal that Portuguese guys can understand English perfectly, can understand Spanish perfectly, can understand Italian perfectly, but speaking it's not so well, as you can see, but understand it's our, it's our, it's our, it's our, our strength. Uh, we have the, all this history of uh, receiving foreign people in Portugal, so there is no problem to adapt our culture uh, i think it's too easy and in the in the, in the land in the land near the the sea i think it's it's the, the most easy 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 way of the adaption because nowadays there are too many foreign people living there uh, everyone wants to see the big wave from Mazare, from for example uh, we have the record of the biggest wave in the world that have been surfed in Nazare. so uh, i think it's it's too easy next slide Coverage press in Portugal. Well, probably uh, is a little bit, a little uh, more, more higher than than Spain. Than Spain nowadays, uh, Spain it's, it's a big, it's a, it's probably five, five six times bigger than Portugal. Average price it's uh, 910, 900, 950 for square meter. Uh, uh, it's not the the highest price uh, in Europe. We have lowest prices, not, not so near the sea, for example. Antonio Barbosa will give you some information about that. He lives in, in, the, in the zone, uh, not, not so close to the sea. But uh, we don't have average price nowadays. But I can tell you, Portugal nowadays is a very, very, very big hotspot. It's a tremendous hotspot. I think Port Portugal, the entire country is probably the, the, the Barcelona 10, 15 years ago. Everybody wants to come to Portugal. It's, it's outstanding, it's out of control. Next slide, please. Well, this is the, the, the in the left, you have the, the, the Lisbon area, the old, is the, the big Lisbon area. On the right, you have the Oporto Lisbon area. For example, for the first impression, you can see Oporto, have, have in, in, in the center downtown a highest a highest uh, highest price three thousand in Lisbon four thousand and seventy. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Oporto is probably one of one of the the, the, the Portuguese cities with the, 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 the potential from recovering uh, buildings uh, from reconstruction. For example, it was uh, the, the the two cities are old cities. We are we are a old country as you can see. But Lisbon uh, have, have become a, a target of too many investments at the, at the, la the last seven, seven, eight years. And Porto, no. Porto is about two, three years ago, start to, 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 to become a, a target to, to uh, foreign, foreign funds to invest, to people to buy and to sell. And, to, and the, our, our, renting, our renting market, it's not so good. People don't want to, to, to rent. The, 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 the yields associated to the, the buy and sell uh, are too high nowadays in, in Portugal. So this is the, 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 typical, the typical areas. For example, in Lisbon, you can go to 1,500 in, for example, Comela, to 2,300 in Mafra. Uh, the, 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 suburbia, the, the suburbs of area of Lisbon, uh, Normally, it's more more cheaper. The downtown, the downtown, it's it's different. For example, uh, the the real downtown of Lisbon, it's it's as the price 
more, much more near the Paris, Paris than Porto, for example. The real downtown, the prime, the prime area. This is the, our our typical our typical prices in Portugal, in Lisbon, in Oporto. Next slide, please. Well, as, as, I, as I, I was told you, for example, Madrid and, and Lisbon have almost the, the, the same price. Berlin and Paris and London a little more, a little, a little more, a little more uh, higher uh, about the price. Uh, I think Portugal still, I think is still a, a very nice uh, and a hot spot for investment. Uh, it's not a highest price. Uh, the quality of living is too cheaper. For example, people don't know a coffee in Portugal. The costs are 70, 70 cents. It's not even a dollar, or not even any, a, a euro. It's too cheaper to live in, in Portugal. People when come to Portugal don't believe the prices. Our real estate, it's not so cheap. Uh, the Portuguese people that live in Portugal uh, don't have the, the, the opportunity to, to have biggest biggest jobs jobs with high high value so they suffer but foreign but for foreign people that comes to Portugal our living it's too cheaper it's too cheaper I think it's it's one of the, one of the best things that we could, you could have in Portugal it's our lifestyle your quality of life it could, could be outstanding for example uh, zones like Cascais, it, it's our Beverly Hills. Uh, the real estate, uh, it's not cheap, but the, the lifestyle is still cheap. So it could, could be a, a, a tremendous opportunity. For example, uh, Portugal uh, it's, has, has been revealed to the world. We have only 10 million people, it's true, but we have in the world about 300 million people speaking Portuguese. For example, Brazil speak Portuguese, Angola speak Portuguese, Mozambique speak Portuguese. There is a tremendous market. Not, it's not only Spain that, that, that are in South, South America. Brazil speak Portuguese and we have a tremendous connection with Brazil and with Mozambique and with, uh, and with Angola. It's typical. We have even a, a community. It's called the Comunidade de, de, de País de Língua Oficial Portuguesa. We have this community. The, our our government speak in first person with each other, and we, we, we push our economy forward. So there, there is too much opportunities to, to come to, to Portugal. Next slide, please. Let's talk about international buyers and who wants to, to come to Portugal. Next slide, please. Well, where are the international buyers buying in Portugal? At today, at today, 42, 42%, 42% want to, 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 to go to Porto. As I told you, Porto is the new hot spot in Portugal. Uh, it's an it's a old city. Uh, there are too many opportunities to improve uh, old, old. Uh, old properties and, and the, 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 the old properties with history, normally people want history. For example, when I, when I am here with the, my American friends and come to Portugal, they are always delighted about the, the outside of the buildings, the history, the, with everything, it's typical. Uh, so Portugal have, uh, Porto nowadays have all that kind of spirit to recover properties. Lisbon gives you the, the, the full package. It's all done, just buy it and leave. Uh, for example, Madrid, Madrid and Spain have the same, the, the, same, the, same, the, same, the, same, the same thing. Everything is recovered, just buy and, and leave. For example, for people that love beaches, uh, Algarve is the, it's our homeland for the, for, to, to make holidays. Uh, for us and for the United K, as I told you, 11% uh, 11, 11 of international buyers want to go to Algarve. One other thing that I, I can tell you, uh, we have always uh, interest from Chinese. There, there, there are too many Chinese guys uh, uh, buying in Portugal. They always want uh, properties near casinos. Porto, Algarve and Lisbon have casinos, so they are in their, in their, in their like, homeland, <laughs> their homeland. 
Next slide, please. Next, Next slide, please. International buyers. Well, there are there are here for for international buyers uh, known in the world. I can I can tell you that I, for example, uh, can you go to the slide the, the previous slide, please? I don't remember the name. Ah. Christian Lebotin, for example, there are too much uh, international uh, people that we, we do with big name in the, in the in the markets that are like, went into Portugal, singers, uh, actresses. Uh, if, for example, we have in Portugal uh, in, in Algarve uh, zone that is called Quinta do Lago and Val do Lobo, one of the most expensive areas in Algarve. It's like it's like Beverly Hills. This this these people from around the world with too much money, it's typical to go to, to, to that areas and buy and live in there, for example. In this in this slide, you can see uh, uh, the modern Portugal, the history, the history, the history buildings that we have in Portugal. We have this 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 kind of unique uh, contradiction, the modern Portuguese and the old, the old and Templar Portuguese country. And I think it's unique. Spain has some, some kind of things like the, like 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 this. Uh, it's a similar country like Portugal, but Portugal have this this Templar culture. Uh, I will, I will always talk about Tumar, the city of Tumar, has been the capital of the Templar of Portugal. Portugal uh, have the, the oldest, the late the, the latest Templars in the world, and Tem uh, Tumar was the oldest uh, capital of that that Templar. I think it's a it's a, a tremendous history uh, because we, we with the Portuguese guys we have the the ocean the Atlantic Ocean uh, flowing in our veins uh, and I think it's our culture is it's too 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 important to to give this 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 attention, uh, attention because it's very 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 good. You can go to the next slide, please. Retiring Portugal. Well, I'm not going to speak a lot about this. The program uh, it's similar like like the the Spanish program. Uh, we have, for example, a big community like nowadays from France. Uh, Portugal has a tremendous program nowadays. Too long about uh, the, the types of retiring in Portugal. For more detailed information, I, I think it's more better to, to speak directly with a realtor in Portugal. Uh, I, I can tell you that Portugal, Spain. They are, they are making competitive. Uh, they are to make. They are making competitive relations. It's about this this issue. Uh, this, the, the 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 programs are not uh, so different. Uh, but the, there is there is a, a, a tremendous uh, quality of life that will come into Portugal because, like Spain, we don't have too hot. It's not a too hot country and not a too a too cold country. It's a, it's a, a temper a, a temperate uh, climate. Uh, I think it's. One of one of the most important things that people uh, take 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 in first in first opinion and the safety and the safety uh, you can go in the all in, in all, any any city in Portugal about uh, midnight one, one, one hour of the of the of, of, of the morning with no kind of uh, any problem uh, it's a very it's very 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 safe device. the next slide please international buyers. One more, one more, please. Well, international buyers. Well, we have these numbers. In orange is the total. The non-residents are in green, and in blue are the 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 straight the, the straight of the non-residents in the in the, uh, with the relation in the total. You can see uh, in numbers uh, in the left. And in the in thousand in, in euros on the right, uh, the non-residents have, in, have increased uh, in the in the in the, old, in the in the last few years. Uh, this is the proof that Portugal has become a hot spot. I think the, it was the one of the biggest secrets in Europe. Uh, I think the internet, the I think the internet, the. the the, uh, the EasyJet 
in the, 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 the new low cost planes make Portugal, put Portugal in the world visible. And so these the, the numbers, they are all increasing. I think it's, it's, I think it's fantastic. We see people from all around the world in Portugal. In Lisbon, for example, there are days in the downtown we can see Portuguese. There are no Portuguese guys there. People from USA, from France, from China, from everywhere. It's, it's outstanding. It's, it's outstanding. The next slide, please. Well, the international buyers, where, where did they come from? They came, they came from, uh, first of all, from France nowadays. Uh, I think the, the, the retirement program of Portugal uh, have, have bring the, this, this new community in Portugal because France didn't, didn't have, uh, have this culture to come to Portugal. The second is, is, is our history, is historic, uh, partner in real estate business that is United, K United Kingdom. The third is Brazil. We have this connection uh, with Brazil that is it's the same language. Germany, China, China is a very important. Switzerland, uh, the United States, African is seven nowadays, it's outstanding. I love people from the United States, from Belgium, from Spain, and from Netherlands. Netherlands is, is, is in the, the 10th position. This is, is the top 10 uh, nationalities that are, are buying in Portugal in making, in making business in Portugal. You can tell there are people from all around the world. From the, 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 the example of China and the United Kingdom, so there are two countries with nothing, nothing with each other, but they, they went to Portugal. It's not only the golden visa, there are people coming to Portugal for the real thing. They, they, they like the, 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 the style of living of the Portuguese. They like our, our, our food. They like our wine. Our wine is a very big industry too. Uh, they like our, the, our way of living. And it's, it's a new, it's a new, it's a new hot spot in, in Europe. It's true. Next slide, please. Well, I'm going to leave this for Antonio. Antonio is a, a, a outstanding realtor in Portugal, a very dynamic realtor in Portugal. He's made the, this last trade mission and he's invited Super Mario to come to Portugal. They have a great time here. It's true, Antonio? Uh, Bob, you're muted. Thank you, Luis. I will now do an introduction of- uh, Thank you so much. Antonio. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. And also, your, your English is far better than my Portuguese. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Our second speaker today on Portugal is Antonio Barbosa. Antonio is so in love and passionate about Portugal that he often conducts trade missions around his beloved country. He is completing a trade mission as he speaks to us today. He has probably pulled off the road to speak with us. And as you can tell, he's, he's in a restaurant and he likes to eat good food. He's a foodie and he loves to travel. Antonio is a realtor with more than 20 years of experience in real estate. Antonio will tell you that he does not sell homes. He fulfills lifestyle dreams. His company name is Infinite Solutions. It is the perfect name as Antonio is all about solving the problems and coming up with best solutions. Antonio has helped over 400 families make Portugal their new home or buy an investment property that will build future wealth. He is a member of FIOPSI USA and NAR. He has the designations of CRS, CIPS and ABR. Antonio speaks fluent Portuguese, English, and Spanish. Welcome, Antonio. Thank you, Bob. And uh, thank you, uh, Yami, for hosting and uh, being excellent in hosting this event. And also the Orange County Global Council, Mi Hermanos de España, Los Quiero Mucho y, y Adoro. And I'll tell you, 
the, the beautiful thing about me living in Portugal is that I can go to Spain anytime I want. Uh, I live so close to it. You forgot to mention in Spain that in 2007, the Ilhas, the Sias, which are really outside of Vigo, okay, their part, they were voted in 2007 by the Vanguard uh, publication as one of the best beaches, as the best beach in the world. So, and I know it, if you imagine the Caribbean um, with the powdered white sand, with uh, just that blue turquoise water, <laughs> water is cold, that's probably a big difference and there are no palm trees. But other than that, it is a beautiful area as well. I love Spain, uh, all of it. Uh, I'm just fortunate to be living close to it that I can go back and forth. So. Uh, Mucho, mucho gusto de, de estar aquí también con Raisa y, y con Francis. Mucho gusto. So I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about Portugal. And, uh, you know, I would probably resume in many ways with um, and in the interest of also saving time and maybe for questions, uh, because uh, I think you guys will forward this presentation uh, to anyone that is participating. So with that in mind, uh, I would just like to say Uh, and just remind everybody, you know, I can give you over a hundred reasons why to move to Portugal or invest to Portugal, but I'll summarize it in top five, okay? And that is uh, climate. Portugal has over 3,300 hours of sunshine per year. It is one of the highest rates in Europe. Lewis talked about satisfaction. Number two, uh, 80% of the people who visit Portugal year after year come back and make it their home eventually. When you talk about satisfaction, it has to do with quality of life, cost of living. And so Portugal, once you discover the culture, the people, the food, <laughs> the wine, you'll never go back or you'll come back very soon and a lot of our friends that were here during this week will testify to that uh, because it is truly one of a kind gem in the world and there are so many beautiful countries in the world to visit number three value in comparison to main european cities the housing prices are competitive in other markets i mean we're talking whether you're in lisbon algarve porto Anywhere in Portugal, uh, it is very competitive. So value, number three. Number four, it has uh, its taxation. We talk about the Golden Visa program here. The Golden Visa program, we have an initial investment of 280,000 euros in a low density area in a home that is over 30 years old. And Portugal does have a lot of homes. That why the Golden Visa was program was created as a boost to the economy after 2012, when we felt uh, the economic crisis here and the world felt that Portugal was no different, but the government came up with a scheme and that's what it is. It's a residency scheme through the acquisition of a property. The minimum investment at the moment is 280,000 euros. And after five years, you will have a residency Uh, well, you will have during that period, you will have a residency status, which will enable you to travel uh, not only through the Schengen space, and that includes 26 countries. So as of the moment that you are in the program of the Golden Visa, you will have that residency status enabling you to travel within the Schengen space. Okay, Minimum investment, 280,000 euros. Um, in the most generalized used uh, value, it is 500,000, but again, there's a minimum and there's different value rates. You can also do it through uh, the setting up a company. Uh, right now, the number is at 1 million euros and you, can you have to create 10 jobs. If you want to invest in property funds through the Golden Visa program, you don't want to buy a property. The Golden Visa was created to Uh, secure residency because as you know Portugal and you know not only the United States and other um, non-European member states there are conventions mm -hmm. so you can travel freely to Portugal 
on a 90-day visa. It's called the Schengen visa. And you can stay in Portugal for up to 90 days, but then you need some sort of residency status. So the Golden Visa program is one of those tools to use. But you don't have to be a millionaire to live in Portugal. You can rent the property through the D7 visa. We have clients, they're, they're not millionaires. They're moving, to, they're moving here, families, they want a better quality of life. And so they rent the property until they finally decide to buy or they figure out where they're going. So it is, we also have the D7 visa. We also have a D2 visa, uh, which is a short-term visa. The D7 visa, you can also secure residency the same way with the golden visa program except one difference, <laughs> the D7 visa, you are mandatory to live in this country 183 days out of the year, okay? And so with the golden visa program, no, the first year it's mandatory seven days. Every year after that, for a total of five years, that's when the golden visa program, uh, you are considered a permanent resident or you can apply for a um, second passport. And then we know <laughs> with that Portuguese passport, uh, what it can enable you to do, to travel freely throughout the world. So after five years, both residency programs uh, enable you to secure a second passport, Portuguese passport, European passport rather. And so that is the only difference is that the amount of time that you can spend in the country, the D7 visa is 103 days and the golden visa is only seven days the first year, 14 days every year after. Okay, so you're talking to, you know, just it's not a lot of time if you are using the golden visa, D7 you do have. So, and we're talking about still number uh, four, that's taxation. And one of the beautiful things about the programs, either golden visa or D7, and the D7 visa is also called the passive income visa. And what that means, anybody that declares as their permanent residence here in Portugal, doesn't mean that you have to live here all year round. It's called the NHR residency status, where you are only mandatory to live 183 days, but you benefit from 10 years of a tax exemption on your passive income. You declare, for example, it's a great, that's why it's called the passive income visa, or, you know, because most people, when they retire, either they have their pensions rental properties, you know, they have real estate uh, uh, holdings. So that income for 10 years will not be taxed so long as you declare Portugal as your home, okay? Uh, and there are conventions where you're not gonna be double taxed as in the US or United Kingdom, other countries, France. As you notice, France is actually one of the biggest, um, as Luis said, one of the biggest buyers, group of buyers, international buyers mm -hmm. here in Portugal. And that is because they, that is the NHR status, I think is the highest number that has been issued. And so, uh, and that's something after 10 years, you will jump back into a uh, normal tax regime, which will probably in the middle of the 28 to 32%. So for 10 years, and that's when Luis said, many familiar faces, Madonna, uh, Christian Lovatin, uh, other artists, musicians, they de declared Portugal as their permanent home. They're not paying on royalties. <laughs> they're, they're pretty smart. They've used the, uh, uh, an exemption that the Portugal created to uh, just boost that economy because the way they see it is that uh, these personalities, not only will they have the Portugal brand in mind, but they will attract other people uh, and when you're here, you're spending, so you're helping the economy. So you're saving for 10 years on that tax exemption. And then also what's, if you are part of the NHR uh, residency status, then even professionals like accountants, doctors, professors, uh, just professionals, they benefit from their income. Anybody that works, because it's, then it's not passive income, but for their income that they're producing, they benefit from a 10% uh, tax. Normally it's like I said, between 28 to 32%, they will benefit from, for the, the, the time that they live here for 10%. So a lot of professionals do move here, uh, create their businesses, uh, accountants, you know, Portugal has great talent. Unfortunately, a lot of our best medical doctors, nurses, 
professionals. They get recruited right out of school, out of university, and they do go overseas. So we have to source out. So that's the government found a way to compensate for that loss, offering that tax advantage. And now, number five reason why you should consider moving to Portugal. Safety. Portugal is rated the third safest country in the world by the Global Peace Index. Okay, It is rated number five as the best uh, country to move by expats. You can do a search, International Living Magazine. Number one country is Costa Rica, La Pura Vida, Panama, Mexico. Uh, so there are a lot of beautiful countries to move, but Portugal is at number five. And so, and as Louise mentioned, Portugal is probably the safest country to visit at the moment. Okay, we are over 85% vaccinated, 85%. That is the number one highest in the world. The closest is Dubai, and they're at 80.2%, or they were as of, as of October 1st, when the country finally opened up. Okay, we are opened up. <laughs> Bars, nightclubs, we've been here on this trade mission. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing to go back to that crazy normal we were once used to. And it's there, okay? And that's because of the sacrifice of the Portuguese people. They knew what they had to get done. It was done. We live off tourism. We live off international buyers, people coming in. And that's uh, the key, is that the people come together. That's what makes Portugal so unique. That's why I've been living here for 20 years, because of that. It's when they come together. They know what has to get done, and we do it. And with the difficulties that we have, we get it done. And so you could pass the slide because basically this has uh, a lot of the buyers that are coming in from France, from Britain, Brazil, uh, Belgium, uh, the Asian market. You know, I'll give you a little uh, hint. The Asian are probably the biggest spenders, but the French are the biggest, are the most buyers. So you can go on to the next slide where we can talk about the golden visa, which I just talked about before, because I want to get to the properties, uh, Bob. There's a video, there's a, in the, in the plan, there's four properties to showcase. You could skip that, you could skip that, you could skip that. Golden Visa, these are all the international buyers. I mean, these are all things, you could skip that. These are all what I just mentioned before, taxes, IRS, the buying process. Yeah, you could stop there. My process is no different doing real estate here in Portugal than it is in the U.S. No difference, okay? What difference is probably the procedures. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that uh, we here, we don't have what we, you guys would call the escrow accounts, earnest deposits, uh, title searches, title insurance. We don't have that. That's done through the due diligence in the land and office registry that the property is registered clearly identifies if there's any liens or mortgages. And so basically you find a property, you search, you know, you can make, you make an offer. The process is the same. So you could skip, you could skip this. So the, the buying of real estate here, one thing to mention, do look for a realtor here in Portugal. Do look for a CITS agent. Do look for an ABR agent. There's people that really know what they're doing. We have top quality agents that are not a part of NAR or not NAR, it's NAR. They're not part of NAR at the moment, but Luis Felipe, Pedro, and myself, we're getting there little by little to elevate the quality and professionalism here in Portugal. Uh, but like anywhere else in the world, we have our challenges. It's no different, but do look for a CITS agent. That is the number one thing to look for. There is a database in CITS and you will find them all here in Portugal. Um, buying process, mortgage costs. Basically, when you're buying a property, just think of it. And this is based on a 400,000 euro property. Basically, you will pay after all the closing costs, registration, stamp duties, property transfer tax, notary fees, registration fees, anything cost that you could be associated, look at it between a six to 8% uh, price that you will add on to the value of the home. So if you have a home of 430, 400,000 euros, I think it's 31,000, so 32,000. Look at 8% on top of that. You can skip now, Bob. Now that's the properties. Let's see the properties here. This is, the first one is in Lisbon, Bob. 
the infinity tower. Our friends, our colleagues that visited on the trade mission, we didn't see it outside. Oh, we didn't see it inside, but it's still under construction. Halfway there, it's one of the most beautiful buildings. Infinity Tower. Um, it's located in Kampulid, which is Lisbon, pretty much in the heart of Lisbon, not downtown. Um, and you can go on to the next slide. Another property. This is the Nialbar, the W residence. It's a branded residence property. property in the Algarve. The idea was to select one property in Lisbon, one in the Algarve, one in um, 
the outside of the R uh, Riviera of Portugal, the Cacascais, land of kings. And so with palaces, old even Juan Carlos, I think my Spanish uh, hermanos will remember he spent his time uh, when, he, when Franco was there um, as the dictator, Juan Carlos lived in Cascais. So we can go on to the next property. Yeah, no. Not this. Let's skip this, uh, Yami. This is the same one that we just said. Okay. Oh, this is okay. Actually, uh, this is one. There should be. This is a property. As Portugal is famous for wine, I, sh I wanted to show you a wine estate, hotel, business uh, that is available in the Porto region of the Douro, uh, which is world patrimony for UNESCO. One more slide, one more video, Yami. Uh, in before this, let me see, or maybe it is that the next one. Let me see if it's that one. Uh, yeah, I think it is. No. No, we've seen that. We've seen that, Yami. The next one. No, back, back. Uh, it's before the 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 wine uh, estate. No, before this, before the W. Then. Well, maybe we only put three. No, I'm sorry. Maybe there was only three. So okay, we'll fast forward. Fast forward. In the interest of saving time, we are at. Q and A, and actually, yeah, because that was the the whole the whole idea. Uh, I saw I saw there was a question there about property prices. Okay, the Infinity Tower prices start at around at four thousand five hundred euros per square meter. Okay, so basically one hundred year one hundred meter uh, apartment because they have different sizes, and so you have to look at it as uh, one one hundred square meters. Uh, 4,500, you're talking 450,000, right? So uh, the prices would start there from one bedrooms, two bedroom uh, and up. I mean, you have prices there that can go up to 8,000 euros a square meter. Okay, that's in the infinity tower. When the property in the W residences in the Algarve, uh, the same around, they're actually around 7,000 uh, 7, to 8,000 euros per square meter. Uh, the property in uh, that you saw in the Wine Valley, estate that is a property that's on the market for 1.9 million euros or wait i'm sorry one one million nine hundred and fifty thousand we can't forget the fifty thousand um and so that's that is the, that is a uh, private sale but the other because you gotta you have to see that it is from square meters and and that's where prices do go they're very based and uh, luis in the um 
in the presentation where he did mention Lisbon, Porto. If you see the outlines in the areas, there are what is the national average of square meters Okay, in those, uh, but that doesn't apply to certain buildings like downtown in San Antonio, uh, Príncipe Real, where I'm at now, right in this area near Vila, uh, near Avenida de Liberdad, prices can get up to 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 euros a square meter. It is one of the highest uh, prime areas, just like Luis Felipe Janeta said. This is prime. Downtown, Chiad, Alfama, this whole Príncipe Real, it is because they have the older buildings. Okay, older homes been fully renovated, um, you know, abandoned buildings that been completely renovated, closed in condominiums. Uh, so you're looking at different prices and there's different zones, even within the city of limits. So you have in the price of Lisbon, you can get up to uh, 6,000 euros a square meter, 5,000, 4,000. But keep in mind, if you go on the outskirts of Lisbon, you will find properties at a three bedroom apartment for 200,000 euros on the outskirts, within the city limits of the villages of Santo Antonio, Príncipe, uh, all those uh, villages within the Lisbon area, the market, those are where prices you will see, like uh, a two-bedroom apartment, 700,000 euros, because, you know, it's it's 7,000 euros a square meter, you know, or or so. So you can get up in those values. So I hope I answered that question. I saw it in the chat box uh, while I was reading. I, I can't do a lot of things at one at one time, sometimes walking, walking and chewing, chewing gum is a little difficult for me. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you have questions. Antonio, there is one question was, um, can you work with a residency visa? Can you work with the residency visa? Yeah. Yes. Can you yes. have some employment? That may yes, of course. Okay. So, no, the uh, residency the residency visa is just a scheme to secure residency after 90 days. That's all. And the D7 visa is one of those visas, not only it's for retirement visas, but for people to work here. It's just a long-term visa, whereas a D2 visa is specifically for working. Uh, it's a working visa, a working contract. That's why it's short-term, two years. But there is no, uh, after two years, you don't get the, uh, the second passport, only through the D7 and the golden visa. So even the D2 visa could be a work visa as well, or even a student visa as you have uh, for there, you know. They get six months, uh, so the D2 visa. But the D7 visa definitely is a work visa. You can work. The, uh, the, the, visa, the golden visa program, you set up a business uh, you, uh, for, um, uh, for having a business. Of, you just have to employ 10 people. So, it, of course, you work. All right. The next question that I see here in chat is from Heidi, and she asked, which is a kind of a difficult question to answer. So she asked, how much would a house cost if I want to buy to invest and rent it out. So let's say a-, a She's talking about ROI. You mean ROI? Is that is that her question? Specifically okay. on ROI? She wants to know what would the house cost? What would be a generality, I guess, of yeah, an impress? Uh, she says, yes, ROI. Ah, okay. All right. that, I only see the, the what the house costs. I think you, you're worried about ROI, your return on investment. So that's, that's why the house costs. Let's just say on a property, that you invest on a property of say 200,000 euros uh, and, and in the cities, uh, there are certain, you know, Lisbon, Porto, Algarve are secure markets. They're markets that are priced already up. Uh, so their return is not gonna be so great. So you will get uh, Porto, Lisbon, Algarve, anywhere between a four to 5% general uh, ROI, okay? Even whether you buy 100,000 euros or 200 or a million, you're looking at four to five percent in those markets. The emerging markets, okay, because they're growing, like the area of the Silver Coast that extends from Sintra all the way to Porto, okay, uh, Aveiro, Be, not Porto, but like near Aveiro, Nazaré. When Luis uh, Felipe Janeta just said we're the highest surf uh, uh, wave by McNamara, for goodness, mm -hmm. in that general region, it's growing, and then you can get an ROI closer to eight, ten percent. If you go further interior, okay, you will see returns of like 15%, 18%. And that is because they're used as holiday homes initially, and then Airbnb or management, somebody will have a management company and you will get higher returns because you, the, you're not renting it out on a month to month uh, rate, right? You're renting it out on a weekly or by night. You have nights in the in, even in the inside, uh, in the interior part of Portugal, on, on, uh, 
on a three bedroom, three, three bath home with swimming pool that costs around 280,000 euros or 300,000, anywhere between 250 to 300, you will get a return about 12% a year. Okay, so the, and that's in the Northern part, the Mino, also a growing area. By the way, the Mino for me, not because I live there, but it is one of Portugal's best kept secrets. It really is. <laughs> Okay, so not too many people know about it. Not too many people know about it, but that's where you see a lot of returns. Also, Paniche, everyone looks for Porto, Algarve, Lisbon, because they're secure market. But Portugal is so big, it's small, but it's big. Luis has his hand up. Yes, just allow me to say one thing. For example, in Portugal, if you buy a property, buy a loan, and if you rent a property, renting, it will be the double of the price of the loan, for example. Just, just to see the the yield associated for the rent, for, for the for the 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 the, 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 for the the return of the investment, buying with the loan, buying with, with the loan is half uh, half half the half the price than the renting renting rent, renting a, a house. Okay. That is so correct. That is so correct, Lewis, because you can buy a property for a hundred thousand euros. Okay, for a first-time home buyer, so you don't have to be a millionaire. We're talking about international buyers and everything, but our local market, and so any international buyer can buy that, and they can rent. They buy a property for a hundred thousand euros, let's just say, on average, right? And uh, um, they, that three-bedroom apartment uh, would rent out maybe. Uh, well, in my local area, is one price, but that hundred thousand. So you can find a hundred thousand euros. Uh, and you will rent it out for closer to 500 euros per month, where 600 euros per month, where if you take out a loan on that 100,000 euros, you will be paying about 300 euros, 320. So that's exactly what, it, what I think that's what you're trying to say. And it's so true. And, and that's why that investment side, people buying, but those bigger returns, it's obviously if you're spending uh, a million euros on a flat, you will be able to rent it in the center of Lisbon on either on a monthly uh, rate or even on a, on a, on a weekly or nightly rate and that you get a bit of bigger return renting it on a nightly or, or or weekly i know that we need to close up here uh, but i, I do have uh, uh, there is one question that was asked and that and i saw it on your slide where it said the investment was 350 euros and you were saying 250 280 uh, okay 350,000 euros. Okay, I'll explain. 350,000 euros is an investment you can make in the center of Porto, in the metropolitan area. What the government does, and they give you a 20% discount, <laughs> an incentive for you to buy in an, uh, a low density area in the interior part of Portugal. And it has to be a home that is 30 years old, the same way it would have to be in um in, in Porto or, you know, that it, with 30 years old. The same way, if you're buying a property for 500,000 euros, that it costs 500,000 euros, or it's in, in the center of Porto, the government will give you a 20% incentive because it's a property of over 30 years old. So your initial investment would only be 400,000 euros. Okay, so that's why I say the minimum investment for buying a home is 280 because the, well, the, you are buying a home in the interior part of Portugal and that it is over 30 years old. That's the two uh, mandatory things, but the initial investment is 350,000, but mm -hmm. with that 20% incentive, it's worth probably investing in the interior. So the minimum investment can be 280. Absolutely, absolutely. Or, uh, you buy a home, you buy a so home in not, the interior. Uh, as I remember in, uh, the Sp in, the, in Spain, it's 500. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And so Spain also in Spain, golden. And it can be 280 in um, Portugal. That's correct. And Spain and also the property has property in the location. It, and also, Bob, I would just rephrase that in Portugal, the golden visa program is after five years, not 10 as it is in Spain. Five years, you have a second passport. You have the Portuguese residency. You could travel freely uh, throughout the world with that passport. And that means a lot. Uh, but it is uh, the initial investment is 280,000 euros buying a property in a low density area, basically in the countryside. Uh, and it has to be over 30 years old. So this is the minimum investment is 280,000 euros. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Yami. Oh, Luis has his hand up. Just one more thing. But, but for example, you can come to Portugal, create 10 jobs with Portuguese engineers. The wages are not too high. 
and you can get the golden visa and buy a property and live in Portugal. It would be more cheaper than that. The, the third, the third way to get the golden visa is investing in culture, in Portuguese culture. Associations. There, there is a there is a program you you can see you can you can send you later. But there are two three ways to get the golden visa: by real okay. estate, by creating economy, by <laughs> investing in. Actually, actually, Lewis, there's four, and I didn't mention four. I did mention the other one four, and that is buying through property funds at a minimum yes. investment of 350,000 euros. But th I think most people would prefer to buy if they spent 350,000 euros. I love the culture and arts, but I, I don't have any, had any client that would want to invest. They would buy a property, but, but you can the invest. Best thing, the best thing, Antonio, is to buy the winery and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can, it, it, we have clients right now that, that they're, because there's going to be making some changes to the golden visa program and what they're doing, they're not buying properties, they're buying the, uh, they're investing in property funds, and you can, you can also, uh, it's the same, same residency st uh, status, this, it's a golden visa program through the acquisition of property funds, and there's quite a few. But for the end, we, we, the real estate industry in Portugal, we make all the due diligence. We, we make it all, everything. You just, you just buy, you make it all, all, all finish, all, all, everything, everything okay. Just, just, just buy the, the, the property. The real estate companies nowadays have full departments to get all the, the, all the things done, okay? One last question. Yeah, one last question. Do they, they have different laws in different states? No. One country, one country, one country. Okay. It's one country. It doesn't matter the region. Quite federal. For all, just, our laws are for full of all, all the countries. And even Madeira and the Azores is the same country as Portugal. So even the islands, we didn't talk too much about the islands of Madeira or the Azores, but definitely they are part of Portugal. They're two beautiful islands. One is closer to the Canary Islands, uh, and the other one is in the heart, uh, is in the middle of the Atlantic, where the Azores, where you did have in the Laje, uh, the Air Force Base. It's still there. It's still there. The the, the United States Air Force has a base there. And uh, the Azores is considered the Pearl of Atlantic. Just a little, oh. just a little note. It won, Portugal won many awards for the travel awards of, of just many things. The 2021 Global Travel Award. One of them for the Azores is the best European island uh, for nat nature and to nature, nature tourism. Okay. That's just a little, little, little note. That's so, so much uh, to see. So much to see that we have to, so much to see. But with that, um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I would like for all of us to stay connected and we can do that uh, for everyone who's watching us and with us today. First, thank you. And then Orange County Realtors Go Business Alliance. We, ha do, we do have a, a Facebook uh, page. Um, you just search for Orange County Realtors Go Business Alliance. You'll find it. There are also Orange County Realtors has two locations. One of them is in Laguna Hills and the address is right there. That's another way to get in touch with us or via email on the bottom. You see Sandra, Yami, Bob's email on the bottom that we can do that. Those are the ways to stay connected with us. And then say that was a, ha sido un placer, un placer fenomenal estar con todos ustedes. And we would like to see you. Oh, for I for I meant to share there. There's two things that on the slides that I had, and if one is that we're going to see each other in San Diego. Hopefully, everyone is coming, and that's next month. Um, so we're going to be there, and then the next one is in December. Uh, Global Business Alliance. We're going to have a global mixer, and we would love for you guys to participate. So even if you have to take a nap during the day, just be with us at the end of the day. <laughs> so let's do that. <laughs> because, you know, typically we do those, we'll see the time, but typically um, we have those later in the day, but we'll see. To accommodate everyone, we'll find a time that it will be good. Um, Bob, you want to say? Uh, I want to thank uh, Francis, Antonio, Luis, uh, everyone that participated. Thank you, Raisa is not, not here, I don't see her, but thank all of you for your participation and uh, so much information to share with everyone. Really appreciate it. Antonio, I think I'm gonna come visit you in Portugal. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so Portugal would love to have you, Bob. Portugal would right. love <laughs> Portugal. And thank thank you for letting us present our beautiful Let's Portugal. go together to Portugal. Yeah. Visit so we, Antonio. We we have to be uh we'll go on the next trade mission. Uh unfortunately we couldn't make it this time, but we'll be going on the next one. Uh so with that, I just want to say it has been a great pleasure to be with all of us, um, with all of you today. And I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I'm really, really, really thankful for each one of you. So I'll see you guys in San Diego. Thank you.